Hey guys, hi. Happy to be here. Really good to see you all here. And I'm an engineer. I'm a developer. Very happy to have, like raise my hand in the last in, in the last session. I like solving problems with programming languages, with technology. The rest of them I often dismiss as, you know, boring, not worthy of my time. People who work with me for long enough know that they've settled, and I've settled on this too. I'm an engineer, and I came to talk about being an engineer and how to become a good, a full stack. I'll talk about what it means also, engineer, why you would want to do this. But first, we need to talk about uh, being a full stack developer. I was at a conference a couple months ago. It was a software engineering institute organized Saturn in Denver. I presented, but a keynote speaker put it really well. He said, like, all right, you're a full stack developer. So tell me, when was the last time you wrote a device driver? And his point was that the stack was very deep. Like there's operating system, all the networking, all the plumbing, though lots of abstractions we delegate to frameworks. We don't even think about them. And the stack we work in, most of us work in every day, is just the tip of the iceberg. And often, if I probably pulled half of you and told you, show me the architecture of what you're building, you would do something like this. I've seen a lot of these pictures. Now you'll tell me, dude, that's old. We don't really talk like this anymore. I said, all right, I'll give you a different version of the tip of the iceberg stack. How about this? You're running React, right? JavaScript, native, VR in the headset. You connect to REST endpoints, running on nothing less but serverless, clearly, right? That's what we do today. And they connect to a polyglot, persistent, SQL, NoSQL soup of databases. Now you can also run this through a magic architecture function, get yourself microserviced, and that's clearly what everybody's working on or want to work on. It's still the same tip of the iceberg stack. Now, being a full stack developer does not mean to be an expert in all of them, because I'll argue and I'll try to prove that you just cannot, and neither can I. Can you be an expert in JavaScript and be an expert in CSS and in HTML? And by the way, we only talked about the tip of the tip of the iceberg, right? What about all the frameworks running in the browser? Angular, one, two, three, four, React, Vue, Ember. What am I forgetting? Uh, Aurelia, like, do you need to know one or two to call yourself an expert? And then lucky you if you run it, your server site in JavaScript. What if not? It can be Java, .NET, .NET Core, C Sharp, F Sharp, Erlang, Elixir, Ruby, Golang. I mean, there's so many. Can you be an expert? In one, is it enough? In two? Databases, like some of you who can throw a JSON into MongoDB and forget. Well, A, you shouldn't. And B, there's so much you need to know about how to run those databases, the apps concerns become important for building right software for them. So can you be an expert? I'll argue that you can't. But yet, I strongly believe in being a full stack developer. So what does it mean then? I'll try to give you a definition that I go by. And a full stack developer, and I really hope that you guys don't struggle reading the code of slides. It's better than bullets for me. I don't know about you. Uh, the full stack developer, I think, is the one, he or she, that at any given point in time has a preference. That's what I'm working with right now. That's part of the stack, that programming language I like. That's my preferred way of doing things today. But I also have a list of other things that I know, that I have experience with, and I have enough fluency in. And I'll define it for you. I'll define what it means to have enough experience and enough fluency in the technology to call yourself an expert enough, right? Not call yourself an expert expert. And that, to me, comes in two words, being able to reason about it and troubleshoot. And I'll give you two examples to illustrate. So presented with a problem in an application that inevitably spans that tip of the iceberg stack, no application lives in one layer. You have enough knowledge to think about the problem kind of top down and bottom up and think of what can be causing it by guessing of the symptoms and be able to troubleshoot. You might be wrong, you likely will be wrong like five times. But you'll have a good idea where to start, where to go, what to do if you're wrong and what to do next. And also the alternative is, given the green field when nothing's been built yet and given the problem, you can define the architecture. Not five years, not three years, not one year. But right now for the first MVP, how to put those components of the different stacks together? What are the alternatives? Why would you do it this way versus that way right now, given what you know? And what to do next when something that you thought you know is not right? Going back to that formula, I think it starts with you clearly willing to 
go through the hassle of having the experience, and I mean real production experience under real pressure, real deadlines, solving real problems with those technologies, and challenging yourself to keep doing it recursively, or if you like, repeatedly as a last computer science term. In three years, a little bit intense, I get it. But I have worked in real production setting with what you today would call the full stack, that little tip of the iceberg. And I've touched multiple technologies on each one. All right? So if, you, if, if we believe for a second, you guys may not agree with me that that's the definition of what a full stack developer, what, what it means to become a full stack developer is, you can argue with me in the questions at the end if I have the time. But if you thought I'm going to talk about cross-training, then think again. I don't think cross-training is going to cut it. It's not enough to have a front-end developer go through a class of Java and then go back to doing the front-end, or the opposite, have a Java dev go through Angular class and then go back to doing Java. We need to build an environment where we can get the cross-experience. Ark was talking about this with the new tools, which I'll talk about too in a second. And I'll argue more. I'll argue that if we can come up with a new kind of growth mentality for our engineers and ourselves too, it's never too late, where change of technology in what you do becomes a recurrent goal on your career path. Some will do it every three years, some will do it every five years, some will do it every six months. But for some professional like solution architect, we might as well require that they do it a few times before they go to SA1 assessment. Because we want them, we require breadth from them. We'll interview them for it, but we don't give it to them. Like we don't promote it, we don't tell them to go do it, and that's hard. If you worked for two years as a Java dev and became a senior, going to do Angular development will kill you for the first two months, but only two months. You'll get it. It's easier and easier every time you switch. Now, making that leap is hard. You'll feel like a novice. You'll feel an imposter syndrome even if you didn't feel it before. But you will be through that experience, better Java developer, I guarantee you, because you'll learn new patterns, you'll learn new ways of thinking in a different language, that when you come back, you'll apply them. So as you go through this, you remain the senior developer. Nothing changes. You just become a novice for two months. And then you're a senior in whatever it is you're doing now. I like this. I like this. Eleni's smiling. I like this. But I think it's, it's great, but it doesn't tell me how do I get there? What do I do to get there? So those three years actually not only taught me technology, more importantly, just switching and doing all this thing and trying to solve problems, I learned to learn, right? And I learned to learn continuously. And I think in what keeps me going when I tell you there are some of those aspects that will help others who actually code every day to want to code in other things and actually keep doing the change to be better at it. There's only three things that are important. Well, I talked about the imposter syndrome. One of the good ways to kill it for me, at least shut up for a while, is to go do something, prove to myself I still can, prove to others that I still can, and I'm gonna feel good for a little bit until it comes back again. But then, let's talk about language tourism first, and then we'll get to the personal challenge. If you're interested in doing language tourism, I mean programming language tourism, there's exorcism.io. Like, go no further. It gives you 30 languages, it gives you bite-sized, one-day, two-day, three-day problems to solve and work on. It's a, it's a collaborative environment where you have other people who will help you, who you can help too, just explore and try something. And then, when you like that, I'll tell you what we need to do, I think, to help you apply that in the more real-world setting to actually get that experience, because this will only give you the flavor. I was that lucky Pammer sitting right by him, and he was like, oh my god, I want to sleep, uh, on the flight over Atlantic Ocean, talking about how can we recreate those three years of my experience. I do, I do remember talking to you about this. How can we create the environment where people can get that exposure, because it helps. It gives you like, lots of things you can't learn by doing the same thing over and over again. And I call this Hippa Max. But now I don't think it has to be anything different. As I was getting kind of ready for it, um, for this conference, I found that um, if I play with my slides a little, it's really nothing new. We like this big X in experience and whatnot. We like the EFM next. It can be just part of how we innovate ourselves a little further. Now, we need a couple ingredients. The first thing, which is not on this slide, but I need to tell you, we need this community of those type A people that I talked about in the beginning that can make things happen, that will be ready to run small projects and small prototypes. But more so, we need other two things. Like, 
as a doer, who I believe I am, I don't have ideas. Well, I do, but they're not, I don't have them. I need somebody else to give me ideas. And that type A community needs ideas, and they'll be like bad ideas. We'll play with them, we'll try them, we'll throw them away. And the second ingredient is, and we talk about this, and we will talk about this, is guess. Well, it's you. Well, in whoever is watching me now. Because we'll need then you to go and participate. It's easy for me today to, it's actually easy, surprisingly, with all our utilization problems, meaning with good utilization problems, to find a small team to work with me for two weeks and build something really new that a client needs right now. I have no problems. We can do more of this, because there's more people like me who can do the same thing, those type A people. I need to know you guys, please come. If you associate yourself with type A, find me. I'll build the community. And we'll build the program where these ideas will create opportunities in the tool, we'll use the tool, so that we can get exposure and get real things done. And you guys are gonna have that platform to go do something different and learn something different. That's how I learned React. I mean, I've read about it a lot, but I've never programmed until I had to build the prototype. And I could run a team, or I could just build it. And I just decided I'm just gonna go build it because I wanna know it. And now I think that I know it. Um, so let me reiterate. Starts with you. Getting through real experience, which we as a company can actually enable by creating that platform for you and pushing you to go over that I don't want to go do the JavaScript. No, you do need to go do the JavaScript, or that, whatever that is, database, or data science. Go do it, because you'll learn things you've never knew existed. And you'll apply them back. If you like your Java, go back to your Java two years later. You'll be a better Java developer. We guarantee, we know. And then challenge yourself, and you know, recursively, over and over again. 